地獄から来た男、その名は鬼丸。Hi, Steve here with a pickups video. Sorry for the lack of uploads over the past month. I have a few good excuses though.、Uh, four weeks ago, my family and I went up to South Lake Tahoe to a cabin over the weekend, so I wasn't able to make a video.、Uh, the week after that, everyone in the house got sick, and I had a nice five day、uh, long weekend due to a computer systems changeover at work. So I had a nice five day weekend, but unfortunately, I was sick the whole time, and so was. My wife and so are my two daughters. So I couldn't enjoy that and I couldn't make any videos.、Um, the week after that, I had a lot of overtime at work. I worked all weekend, so I couldn't make one last week or the weekend before last. And then last weekend, I finally had a, a weekend off and I didn't want to deal with making videos or, or gathering up all my pickups. But back with the pickups video this week. Uh, another thing I've been missing out on is, is my diet and my、um, exercise routine. With all the overtime, and、uh, not to make up any excuses, but with all the overtime and the family getting sick, I've not been good with the gym. I'm thinking about bringing back my diet updates because I'm kind of being a slob lately. I really need to start hitting the gym heavy、uh, next week and、uh, start eating better. So, I have a lot of pickups. I pick up quite a bit.、Um, I still squeezed in a little bit of time here and there to, to pick up some goodies to hoard or、uh, sell or even play some of these or watch. I found some really good stuff for me that is、uh, over the past month, so I'll start sharing that right now. Okay, first thing I got, and I'm really proud of this one, is the old、uh, Resident Evil Gaiden for Game Boy Color. Even came in the little case.、Uh, I ordered this one off the internet.、Uh, I, I was kind of frustrated with all the overtime, so I was saying to myself, I'm just going to buy myself something selfish, something ridiculous. So I spent like $50 or $60 on that. I think that's about average price for it. I usually don't buy stuff at outrageous prices, but this is a game that, that I, I really wanted. I had it before and I played through it. I enjoy this game a lot. For what it is, this little Resident Evil Gaiden for Game Boy Color, this little 8 bit cartridge, sort of、um, captures the essence of Resident Evil in a little 8 bit game. I, I've enjoyed this game 10 or 12 years back. I had it in my car, my car got、uh, broken into, and all my Game Boy games, all my PlayStation games,、um, all my DS games, my DS, I think a couple of my brother's Xbox 360 games all got jacked. Um, I'm not supposed to talk about that. My wife will get angry. I'll tell the story someday. Anyway, I have this game back.、Um, up in uh, uh, Lake Tahoe, we had a good time.、Uh, the kids played in the snow and we、uh, relaxed in the cabin. But、uh, one day I had to、uh, take a few minutes to stop at the、uh, local game store.、Uh, retro game store was in town. I think it was called the Warp Zone. It was a good little store. The, the,、uh, the uh, clerk or the,、uh, the dude in the store was really polite and nice and helped us out.、Um, they had a rack of、uh, 50% off games. So I've really been on a Sega CD kick lately. So I got the old Tomcat Alley. It was marked at 10, so I got it for 5. And then this、uh, three game pack of the Sega Saturn、uh, Virtua Fighter 2, Virtua Cop, and Daytona USA. That was marked at 15, so he cut,、uh, that was cut in half seven. He gave me both of them、uh, for $12、uh, even, which was cool of him. I don't have a Sega Saturn, but I figure this is a good starting point, a few good games to have if I ever get one. And then Tomcat Alley. I hear a lot of trash talked about this game, but from what I played of it, it's really enjoyable. I love 80s style movies or 90s style movies, even, even campy 80s, campy 90s. And、uh, I, th I think this is pretty well made for what it is. It's all FMV.、Uh, you kind of use the reticle to aim at planes. Everything's done in full motion video.、Uh, not very high resolution as all Sega CD games but are, but,、uh, but, but I, I, I kind of enjoyed it. I played a few missions of it. And then I got sidetracked with, with、uh, some other stuff. But I enjoyed this. Oh, and I forgot to mention when I went to that、uh, Sacramento Gamers Expo, I、uh, picked up Legend of Dragoon for PlayStation 
kind of want to start playing some RPG games because they're nice and relaxing. I don't get stressed out. Um, they, they are time consuming, but I can play a little bit here and there. Maybe grind a little bit, save it, uh, get my characters powered up so I don't have to stress out when I fight a boss or whatever. So far, I've really enjoyed this. I think this is, uh, I think it's published by Sony. I, I think it has this, the quality of a Final Fantasy game for the time. Kind of a medieval, kind of feels like a mixture of Final Fantasy and Conan uh, type style. Fun little adventure, uh, rescue the, the girl type deal. A lot of interesting creatures. The story is kind of progressing pretty well. I kind of enjoy it. It kind of feels like an old uh, fantasy movie from the 80s or 90s. Like I said, I've been on a Sega CD kick lately. I, I uh, finally beat Snatch, or I finally played it, and I, I got addicted to that. Um, uh, the Bad Company Gaming, Fred, a long time ago, sent me a, a repro copy of Snatcher. It's a really nice copy. Yeah, see, it's a really nice, uh, nicely made repro. The disc is, uh, is beautiful. It almost looks real. So I finally played through that thing on my JVC XI. And man, I really enjoyed this thing. I, I stopped everything I was playing to play this. Uh, it's kind of one of those games you enjoy so much. Uh, when I was at work, I was kind of thinking about it. Like, I'm going to go home and see what happens next. Yeah, for, for a 16-bit game, this holds up well. Like, I, I enjoyed this as much as I did do any modern game. Really love the story, all the homages to old uh, 80s and 90s movies in here. Sort of a point-and-click adventure with uh, some first-person shooting. Uh, uh, sort of like... Uh, a light gun type game. I didn't play with a light gun. I did fine with the uh, the Genesis controller though. Anyway, back to the pickups. Uh, a dude on offer up had some Sega CD games. He actually had a Fatal Fury special CD for forty dollars loose, and I really wanted to get it, but I kept putting it off, putting it off, and then and then someone uh, snagged it. But the same dude had uh, some other Sega CD games. Not so valuable. I think I spent 20 bucks on them. But they were some games I wanted. Well, not so much this one. I got this this sampler pack deal. Uh, it has hot hits. It has like music videos done with, uh, with Sega CD art. Like it plays a music video on the C CD player while it plays some uh, old 16-bit uh, graphics and art. And then rock painting, same same sort of thing. Uh, uh, adventurous new music. Yeah, there's a Jimi Hendrix song on here, a Fleetwood Mac. Uh, all kinds of stuff on here. I, I kind of get a kick out of stuff like that. And then an old uh, a Prince of Persia. I, I can't get into this game. Uh, Prince of Persia doesn't have the case. Sega CD. This is kind of ones I wanted to get. I never really played through Prince of Persia. I don't think I am after playing this. I appreciate that sort of style of game, but this it's just kind of too frustrating for me to deal with. Uh, and this is one I wanted. A Sherlock Holmes. Uh, it's a sort of a, a mystery game. I'm assuming it's point and click. I'm not really sure. I know there's a lot of FMV. I think it was really expensive to make the game. But on the other side, it has the old uh, Sega classics on here. It has uh, five or four Sega Genesis games: Streets of Rage, Revenge of Shinobi, Columns, and Golden Axe. Golden Axe is probably my favorite Sega Genesis game, and this is a pretty cool version of it. It's the same as the Genesis, only they added with the uh, good CD quality sound, um, the arcade music. So it's the uh, Sega Genesis Golden Axe with arcade music. The only trouble with the Golden Axe is you can't do two-player, and I don't know why, uh, I don't know who made that call not to have a two-player Golden Axe. But it's no biggie. I have uh, that game on Genesis anyway. And then uh, got Cliffhanger in the box, and I kind of just wanted this because I like the movie. It has a lot of cutscenes from the movie. It pretty much plays the first half of the movie on here. Uh, from what I played, the beat em up parts are not so bad. Like I know this game gets a lot of hate too, but there's a downhill um, racing segment where you're racing down a. You're on a. Uh, it was never in the movie that I remember, but he was in a. He's on like a surfboard, escaping an avalanche. Uh, it's exclusive to the Sega CD game. Um, 
and it's really, really difficult. So you have to avoid uh, rocks and bushes. And it's, it's just a nightmare. It's, it kind of took me back to that turbo tunnel um, on Battletoads for NES. Like it is frustratingly hard. I'm not saying it's bad. It, it's really cool looking, and it. But man, it, it's frustrating. I don't think I'm gonna go back to this. And then the music on here is awesome. It's the it's the score from the movie is used within the game, and I I've always liked this the score of this movie or the the soundtrack. Um, and you can even listen to the tracks um, on the CD player, which is cool. I don't have this cliffhanger soundtrack, so that's cool. I had some points at GameStop and I got this Silent Hill um, HD collection. This is another one I hear people talk a lot of crap about. Um, they changed the voice actors and whatever. From what I understand, they did bring back the original uh, the original voice actors as an option. You could have the original audio in here. From what I hear, this is a really bad port, or both games are, are badly... Uh, converted over to this, but I just wanted to have this anyway because uh, Silent Hill 2 is one of my favorite games. I can take or leave three, but it's kind of nice to have both of them. Um, and I use some bonus, I use my uh, bonus points, cash it in for some credit to get this. It, it's usually really expensive, it's $25 and then Pro Elite, 20 bucks. But anyway, I got that, so I have that for my PS3 now. I was kind of hoping to get that before all the PS3 games disappear. Oh yeah, yeah, this is the game. Uh, this is this is pretty much the game I've been look, waiting for all year, or for a year, or ever since I, I've heard it was going to be released. Resident Evil 2 Remake. I got the Deluxe Edition, which comes with some extra costumes, and the original uh, soundtrack to the original game. I played it through with the new soundtrack. It's kind of more ambient sound and not really any melodies or anything. Sort of like a modern type game. Um, I put the old music on and I enjoy it way, way more. But either way, this is a, a great game. This is probably the best remake I've ever played. It, it, it feels so much like the same game, but it feels so modern. And uh, I can't imagine a remake of Resident Evil 2 uh, being any better than this. Um, you struggle with it definitely. I think it's safe to say the original Resident Evil 2 is easier than this. Um, I like this game so much I went back and played uh, the original Resident Evil 2 on my Vita and I played through that pretty quick very easily. I had tons of ammo and health compared to this thing. I might just not be managing stuff the right way. I might be killing too many zombies and and not uh, running by them when I should. But. Uh, but man, this game was pretty difficult for me first time through. I played it through with Leon. I'm playing it through with Claire right now. Claire's campaign is crazy. They've, they've added some stuff. I think it's really well made. Uh, this is the type of game I like. This Just pretty pretty simple premise, like nothing new, but it's just so well made. I can't really think of anything new or original about this game. It's just like what I've always wanted. It's just really well made, really nice graphics. Uh, still has the same feel. For a while it, it took me back like deja vu, like I was playing the same game as the original Resident Evil, but, but then again it's so different. Anyway, yeah, let me tell you, uh, if you have trouble with this, when you get the Magnum, or the Desert Eagle, what is it called, the Lightning Eagle, the, the, the one that shoots the, ma um, the Magnum rounds, I would just save that thing and save all the ammo you get for it. Don't use it on any zombies or anything. Even even the first few bosses don't use that. And then at the end, uh, the final form of uh, of Birkin, I had all my uh, magnum rounds. That's pretty much the same strategy I do with the old Resident Evil 2. But then when I, you fight the final form of Birkin, you can just uh, smash him with those magnum rounds. I think you'll probably still have some left over to fight uh, Mr. Tyrant at the end. Okay, got some. Uh, I had a, got a gift card from uh, from some family members at Christmas for uh, Rasputin's music, so I got a ton of stuff I'd been wanting. Uh, they finally had a copy of Willow in there, so I have Willow now. Uh, Ron Howard's Willow. This was a movie I saw at the theater when I was a kid, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's written by George Lucas and produced by George Lucas. It feels a lot like Star Wars. It feels more like Star Wars than the new movies feel like Star Wars. 
Here's another one I've always wanted, but I never can find it for the right price, but with the gift card I went ahead and got the Rocketeer. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name, Johnson or something. He directed the new Captain America movie, the, the first Captain America. It has all, all these really great visuals. This is a, a nice movie to look at. The old like 40s uh, style. Uh, Timothy Dalton's in there, one of my favorite actors. Uh, two-time Bond actor, James Bond. Uh, yeah, I really like that movie. Um, I didn't have these on uh, DVD, so I I completed my Mad Max DVD collection. Now I have uh, Road Warrior and Thunderdome. Got my my two favorite Highlander movies, uh, Highlander One and Highlander Two. Uh, speaking of cliffhanger from earlier on Sega CD. I, I couldn't. I guess I didn't have the DVD that, so I had to get Cliffhanger. Uh, this is a really enjoyable action movie. Really violent. Uh, for like a, uh, back then, mainstream movies were very violent. Uh, I guess you could say they were cheesy and corny. I just like them way more than the action movies now. The bad guy is really crazy. Dude. I like all the bad guys in here. They're they're really cliche goon uh, movie henchman villains. I didn't have any of the lethal weapons, so I got them all in one case here. Uh, four lethal weapon, one through four on DVD. Oh, I got the Edge. I don't think I've ever seen this. The Edge. Um, this was a recommendation from uh, Colton West that does video game reviews and movie reviews, uh, mostly movie reviews. A lot of stuff I like, like. Uh, Got kind of cheesy B movies. He usually talks about, but but uh, he talks about some good movies too, like this. I didn't un I did not know this was sort of a Jaws type movie. It's about uh, these guys uh, Hopkins and Alec Baldwin are in a plane crash in the wilderness, and uh, they're fighting off this bear. I guess it's supposed to be a lot like Jaws. Like there's three dudes, and they sort of have a, a relationship, sort of like the three dudes from Jaws that go out and hunt the shark. And I didn't know it was that type of movie. I thought maybe it was a, a suspense thriller where they're trying to kill each other or something or one of those type of movies. But apparently it's sort of, it's closer to Jaws. Yeah, and Jaws is my favorite movie, so I wanted to give this a try. Another one I got, uh, sort of a guilty pleasure movie, DLA, based on the video game series. Um... I like Paul W.S. Anderson. I like the Resident Evil movies. I like, uh, what is it called? Um, Mortal Kombat. And I, I, this movie is, is just wacky. It, it's so wacky, it's entertaining. It's probably the only live action movie I know that has Ryu Hayabusa from Ninja Gaiden in it. So you gotta give it that. Um, it has all these pretty ladies in there. I don't even know who any of them are, actually. Uh, I, I think Kevin Nash uh, is in here, the wrestler. He plays that big dude. I don't even really know the names of the DOA characters besides Ryu Hayabusa. Oh, okay, and here's one I really wanted for a long time. It's one of my favorite movies. I can't believe I didn't have it. I've seen like bootleg versions of it, and I have the torrent of it on, on my PS3. But uh, it's really nice to have the actual DVD, this... Uh, collector's edition DVD of Star Crash. Roger Corman's cult classic. I don't think Roger Corman had anything to do with the production. I don't think his name was attached to it until later on. Um, but still, I, oh man, I love this movie. I love Italian um, exploitation movies from the 70s and 80s. Um, this is a sci-fi. It was just made in, uh, in the late 70s to be a Star Wars ripoff, to ride the Star Wars wave. Um, a French producer got a hold of uh, Luigi Cozy, who goes by uh, Louis Coates in this movie. Uh, they Americanized his name. Yeah, Star Wars ripoff. Really enjoy this movie. Especially, I really enjoy the special uh, d um, features in this movie. There's There are two commentaries in here by Stephen Romano, and I learned a lot from that about this movie, a lot about movies in general from this guy. He's a big movie buff. Uh, he has some great commentaries. He's like probably the biggest expert in the world on uh, Star Crash. He, he said all kinds of 
uh, wacky shenanigans that, that happened during the making of this movie. This I can't believe this movie was made like they really had to be creative with this, with the budget and the the uh, climate problems, the weather, the people getting sick, um, the low budget they had. They really had to be creative. Um, all the little models, all the back projection techniques. It's pretty amazing that this movie's made. It's a Star Wars ripoff. No one would say it's as good as Star Wars, but man, I just really appreciate this guy. Luigi Cozy was a big uh, Harryhausen nerd, so. He says in his interview, and here there's an interview with him, uh, he uh, wrote this movie, I think he wrote it in like a day, like the producer said, have you seen Star Wars? I want you to make a Star Wars movie. And uh, the director said, um, oh yeah, I know a Star Wars, I have seen it. But he really hadn't seen it, but he had the uh, novelization of the movie on, uh, so he read that in like an hour, and then he wrote the the script for this in about a day. Man, really fun movie though. I, I can't believe John Barry does the music for this. I don't know how they got a hold of him. I guess these producers could get a hold of any big uh, movie composer. John Barry was probably the biggest at the time. He did the music for this. I think he did the score for this in a few days or in in days, and it's a really great score as always from John Barry. Uh, David Hasselhoff's in it. Uh, Caroline Monroe, who I already love from uh, from uh, The Spy Who Loved Me. She was the sort of the meanie uh, assassin girl in uh, The Spy Who Loved Me. Had a, a small part, but very memorable. Um, really gorgeous. Oh, she, um, I've always liked her. She had an interview on James Bond Radio, so I've always been a fan of her. I like hearing from her, but she has an interview on this DVD, too. Um, Christopher Plummer has a role in here of Captain Von Trapp from The Sound of Music. He went on to be the Klingon guy actually in a Star Trek movie. He, he was a big movie star. I don't know how they got him, but I think he he was paid for four days of filming, but he got all of his filming done in one day. So they have Christopher Plummer in here. He plays like the Emperor of the Universe. The bad guy in here is really over the top. Um, I can't think of his name. You see him in a lot of these movies like Rocky, uh, a really over the top of being the merciless type villain. That's the type of style. I love this movie. It feels like Flash Gordon meets Star Wars meets uh, uh, Ray Harryhausen movie. Uh, uh, yeah, Luigi Cozy, the uh, director, was a big uh, Harryhausen nerd, so he loved those Jason the Argonauts and Sinbad movies. Um, so you see a lot of that in here. It kind of feels more like uh, uh, Jason and the Argonauts in space um, than Star Wars. Even down to the same beach that they filmed the uh, the Colossus or the Titan, the giant uh, metal guy from Jason and the Argonauts. There's a giant metal Amazon in this, and I think the director is such a nerd. He wanted to go to the exact strip of beach in in Italy to film it. And they found it, but they had condominiums that had been built up so they couldn't film it in the exact spot. So they moved down the beach a bit to film the uh, the giant uh, Amazon robot. Oh man, just the back projection techniques they used were so... Uh, they were so diligent. Uh, frame by frame they did this back projection animation with the lightsabers and the, the laser beams. And the, the stop-go animation robots. Uh, not quite Harry Housen level, but it's pretty good for the time. Oh, and then Caroline Monroe, the Bond girl I was talking about, plays the star, the lead in here, uh, Stella Star. Uh, she was in Sinbad, and that's uh, and the director liked her from that, so I think he just picked her out and had her be in this without an audition or anything. Okay, blah 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 blah. Okay. Man, I'm just really uh, happy to have this. My buddy at work, Carmine, uh, really hooked it up for Christmas with this one. I, I probably watched this four times and all the extras. Okay, I got Aliens, or yeah, Aliens, VHS for 25 cents. Uh, <laughs> Pictionary for Wii for 50 cents. Looks like there was some sort of drawing tablet made for this game for the original Wii. This is THQ, and uh, that game collector was telling me that this is the game that broke THQ. 
So I don't know, there might be an interesting story to that. 50 cents, I, I don't know why I got that. <laughs> okay, got a, finally got a copy of Dragon's Lair. This is DVD, uh, this plays on DVD, so this is pretty much compatible with PlayStation 2, Xbox, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and so on. You can play this thing on, on anything, any DVD player. I haven't tried it yet. I assume the picture is good. Okay, got uh, Wifey Age of Empires with the expansions here for PC. I got that for 79 cents at Goodwill. Uh, my wife really likes the Age of the Empires. Uh, for a dollar I got this um, PlayStation uh, demo disc. I don't know where it came from. If it came from a magazine or, or or whatever it was. It has quite a few good demos in there. I was gonna give it away. Let, if anyone wants this, let me know. Got some UMD movies, Casualties of War with uh, Michael J. Fox and Sean Penn. I don't think I saw this movie. I remember it came out in the late 90, or late 80s, early 90s. SWAT. Uh, I just got these, they were like, tw uh, a dollar. I don't even know why. I don't you even really watch UMD as much anymore. Anytime I see the Xbox green, I get excited. And uh, I, I always, I don't know, I'm just a sucker for Xbox. I'm starting to build up my Xbox collection, the original Xbox. I can't stand The Sims, but but this was a dollar, so I got it. It has the book and everything, and the disc is in good shape. Uh, from what I understand, this is a, a you could sell this for a little bit more than other DVDs. And I already have a copy of this. I enjoyed this movie with Ice-T and Rutger Hauer, Gary Busey, F. Murray Abraham. A, sort of a new take on the most deadly game, uh, Surviving the Game. Uh, I got that for a dollar. I think I have three copies of this and now. I was going to sell them, but who knows. Um, we got Untold Legends Brotherhood of something or other Brotherhood of the Blade for PSP was over there They usually charge more for games. I don't think this game's worth anything, but This was 99 cents and it has this cool blockbuster case that holds two uh, UMD games a uh, demo disc uh, I used to love Xbox magazine. I loved getting those magazines every month and you'd always get quality demos uh, to play on your Xbox every month. So it really gave you a good idea of what type of games you wanted to spend your money on. Uh, here's oh September of 2005, issue 48. Um, I already have this one. I have quite a few doubles of these things, so if anyone's looking for them, let me know. Okay, and then my favorite pickup, other than Star Crash, um, I picked up yesterday actually, it was on OfferUp. Um, I got the old uh, original PlayStation 3 with backwards compatibility. Um, I, I've been wanting one of these, tight whites always hyping them up, and I can see why. I almost fell for a couple times, uh, people would post them and say they're backward compatible but really I think they just mean they're backward compatible with PlayStation 1 which all PS3's are backward compatible with PlayStation 1 I almost fell for it a couple times thanks to my my buddy power player Paul the uh, PlayStation 3 wizard uh, he knows these things in and out he he told me what to look for the model number and everything and uh, the one you want is the one with uh, four USB ports and this little little door up here, uh, I thought this was for a, a memory card, but memory cards don't fit in there. It, it has built-in memory card slots within the uh, the system, within the hard drive, which is cool. And then this little door is missing. I might have to look for a little door that goes up there. But anyway, from what I understand, these are sought after, and uh, I got this for $50, and it works well, and it came with uh, Soldiers of Fortune and uh, MLB 15 I don't think those are worth anything I think I can get like three bucks at this for this at GameStop I don't know I might just keep I don't have any baseball game newer baseball games I mostly like those old like RBI baseball for the old Nintendo I don't know if I could get into something like this but who knows I might just keep it don't have any uh, newer baseball games um yeah so this thing works good 
It looks sort of rough, but uh, it works well. I might take it apart and blow it out. Yeah, so thanks uh, Tight White and uh, Power Player Paul and um, Hidden Game Room was, was helping me out uh, explaining how these things work. There are several backward compatible versions. You just have to do the research, I guess, to know which ones were good in. And this is, uh, I guess there was A and B model. This is A. So I guess this one is known to overheat. So I gotta be careful with this. Uh, I learned that from, from HGR. And it, had, uh, it didn't have a controller, but it had the cables and the power cable. Um, and then it had this little rock candy receiver. I don't know why, why you would need that for a PS3, like I thought all the, the controllers went on Wi-Fi already. Uh, so there's this little rock candy receiver. I don't know what it is. If anyone needs this, or they find a controller that this goes to, let me know you can have it. Whew, okay, finally got through with that. Uh, thanks for sticking around if you're still here. Um, I'll talk to you later. I'll try to do something more creative in the future. Um, I just wanted to get back in front of the camera and share some stuff. Sorry if I haven't been commenting a lot of videos. I try to watch all my, my good buddies in the community's video. Sometimes I, I'm, I don't have a lot of time, so I put them on a playlist. And I don't have time to comment on all of them. Um, I really try to watch all of them. That's pretty much most of the entertainment time I get is watching uh, my friends within the community's uh, videos. So I'll try to get back and stay on top of that. Anyway, thanks again for stopping by. This has been uh, Steve, a.k.a. Tylord. I'll see you next time. Bye!